5 TV, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, please share this video, support your boy, support good content at all times, all social media is in the description box, and please hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I drop that heat, this video is sponsored by my boy Fast Classic, mixtape is in the description box, it is absolutely free, definitely give him a download, give him a listen, and this video is sponsored by my boy Matt, definitely check his apparel out on IG at we all from, now, 160 pound champion of the world, Demetrius Boo Boo Andre. Oh, I mean, he's one of the top technical fighters in the sport, hands down. Southpaw, very skilled, can box, punch, fight on the inside, fight on the outside. One of the most versatile fighters in the sport. He did an interview with the Boxing Voice, I think. Big shout out to the Boxing Voice, and that's that whole crew. They've been doing it for a long time. Big shout out to them. But Demetrius Andre basically gave Spence Jr. an open invitation for a title shot in 160. Gave him an open title shot at 160. Now, initially, I, I laughed when I heard it. Not because I don't think that's a great matchup. That's a hell of a matchup. That's a great matchup. And if people were willing to see Mikey Garcia fight Spence Jr., then I don't see a problem with Spence fighting somebody at a 154 or if he wanted to be great, fight somebody at 160. And Spence Jr.'s name has been connected to Canelo Alvarez for a while. People have been talking about that fight possibly happening. I mean, it's a long shot. Don't get me wrong. But that that fight right there would do a million. That would do a million pay-per-view buys. Spence Jr., Canelo Alvarez. That would be enough money to go around for absolutely everybody. But the reason why I laughed at it is because Demetrius Andre is with zone. Spence Jr. is with... Al Heyman, Premier Boxing Champions. Basically, I laughed because I was like, how are you going to make the fight happen? At this point, it's kind of just talk at the end of the day. I haven't seen anybody sign with the zone fight under an Al Heyman banner. And I haven't seen anyone outside of Danny Jacobs, outside of Danny Jacobs, fight under the zone banner being an Al Heyman guy now is it good to talk a little bit yeah is it okay to keep your name in the headlines absolutely but this is a situation where the politics of boxing really just has you like in a tug of war because as much as I would love to talk about a possible Spence Boo Boo Andre fight, like I know damn well that's not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. Like the promoters, the businessmen of boxing, they are just not working together unless it's some type of special circumstance. And it's been like that for the past five years. It's been like that for the past five years. Promoters only working together really under two conditions. Either number one, it's a mandatory and a purse bid. Or two, the fight is so big that it's enough money to go around and everybody's happy. So when you're only getting guys crossing the street under those two circumstances, then there's going to be a lot of fights left on the table that we, the fans, are not going to be able to see. And this is one of those fights. So I'm not even going to sit up here and waste my time breaking down how an actual Spence Jr. versus Demetrius Andre fight would go. But what I did want to touch on is Demetrius Andre saying that Spence Jr. is one dimensional and he de depends on his power. Completely disagree. Completely 
disagree with Boo Boo Andre, and I'm gonna tell you why. Is his game predicated off of him landing power shots? Absolutely. But you can't knock a person for their bread and butter. That's like saying, oh, well, what if Jordan didn't have a fadeaway jumper? Or what if Iverson didn't have a crossover? Or what if Shaq didn't have a size? What if Tim Duncan didn't have the fundamentals? What if Barry Sanders didn't have the speed? What if Odell Beckham Jr. didn't have the quickness? Like, you can't take a person's bread and butter away. Like, when you're trying to analyze somebody. Like, that's Spence bread and butter. Like, the power shots. That's his bread and butter. And not everybody can duplicate what he's doing. I think we... We've seen Jamel Charlo, because he trains with Spence Jr., try to adopt that same style, and it just doesn't it just doesn't fit the same with Charlo. It just doesn't fit the same. The reason why Spence Jr. is not a one-dimensional fighter is because you pay so much attention to the power shots, you're not really paying attention to the other things that he's doing. He sets things up beautiful with the jab. He sets things up beautiful with the jab. That's number one. Number two, he always makes sure the footwork is right. He's always in a position to punch, always had the feet planted, but he's not flat-footed to the point to where he can't move out of the way of shots. Defensively, he does a lot of little small things. Like he'll turn, he'll twist, he'll dip down a little bit. His head can be straight up sometimes, but he blocks a lot of shots with his gloves, blocks it with his arms. He does a lot of subtle things just to brush off shots. You have to sit down and really watch Spence Jr. at work. He is far from a one-dimensional fighter. Far from it. The only thing that Spence Jr. needs to start doing more and this, is, and this is partially because the guys he's fighting, a lot of times they're not really throwing shots at him. Sometimes Spence has to throw with his guy. What I mean by that is when they're punching, you have to throw at least something along with them just to let them know that you will throw with them. The few times that Mikey Garcia threw punches in the fight, Spence Jr. really just went defensive. Like, he just went in the straight defense mode and then got back to his base. The problem with that is if you do that all fight, then guys are just getting off shots. They feel comfortable getting off shots, three, four, five punch combinations on you, and they know all you're going to do is just block them. Like, you're not going to counter them. You're not going to hit them with a check hook or anything like that. So that's the one thing that I would like to see Spence show more in fights. I'm not going to say he doesn't have it, but... He's not in a lot of fights where he has to showcase that skill set. And I hope he gets in the ring with someone that can showcase that skill set. But Andre is completely wrong. Completely wrong. Spence is far from a one-dimensional fighter. Now, I said that I wasn't going to get into who would win that fight between Andre and Spence Jr., because I feel like that's a fight that's not going to happen. And I don't even think it's possible to happen. But the one thing that I would like to see is Andre get at some of these guys that's in his own network. The Triple G's, the Canelo's, the Danny Jacobs, you know, guys like that. There's plenty of guys in his own network that he can get at. Hell, if he wanted to reach out to somebody in Heyman's network, he should be trying to get it both of the Charlos because there's a long history with that. So if he is going to go outside of the box, he should go outside of the box with one of those guys, except for Spence Jr., who is at a lighter weight class and with the Heyman stable. So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. G5 Jeff TV, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Please share this video, support your boy. Support good content at all times. I appreciate y'all. Peace.